You know, as a full-time fishing guide in Florida and host of Chasing the Sun TV on Discovery Channel, um, I spend almost 300 plus days a year on the water. Uh, I don't get too many days to break free and get in the woods. Um, normally when I do get to break free, I'm at home in our piney woods in Florida chasing the same animals, they're just a little smaller deer. Uh, I've heard about these deer in South Texas my whole life. So the first opportunity that I got to come out here and see Jamie and Josh's ranch, I wasn't gonna pass that up. So I had to rearrange a few things, but hey, I jumped in the truck with Jamie. We drove straight through all the way here to South Texas now, and I'm glad I did, because it looks, looks like it's gonna be a fun hunt. So we're heading out for our first hunt, and it's in the afternoon. And I mean, my first impression of this ranch is just, you know, beautiful country, but, my, but the next thing I notice is all the, the equipment, the stuff they're using. I mean, they have these all seasons blinds that, I mean, to me, it's nicer than being, you know, in the house. I mean, it's nice and comfy. I'm not used to that. We hunt out of some kind of rickety stands, but so that was a nice change of pace crawling in somewhere like that. And I guess they spend a lot of hours in these blinds. So, you know, it's worth it to have some, some nice equipment. All right, I'm definitely not in Florida anymore. So we left uh, early in the morning and drove hard all day. We're in South Texas. <laughs> this is a new level of excitement for me too because this is like a dream hunt that I was not expecting. It wasn't really planned, just had a last minute opportunity. And when stuff like this comes up, you just gotta jump in the truck and go and that's exactly what we did. And we're here, I can't believe it. Mesquite brush, and cactus, and so cool. All the stuff I've been seeing on TV my whole life. And now I'm seeing it in person. I don't know if y'all can hear these coyotes out here, but they're pretty excited. And if they come over here and view, they might be in trouble. So we're planning to hunt four days down here in South Texas. And of course, you know, on the first hunt, immediately, I mean like right after we get in the blind, this big nine point comes strutting out. And as soon as I see him, I mean, I'm not thinking about what it is, let's count points or anything like that. I just reach over and grab the gun. I mean, cause as soon as I saw those antlers coming across the field, I knew that that was a shooter. And I'm thinking, I can't believe we're supposed to hunt, you know, mornings, afternoons for four days and I'm gonna shoot this buck in the first five minutes we're here. That is the biggest buck that I've ever sat here and not thrown a gun up at. I can't believe I'm looking through binoculars and not a scope right now. Oh my goodness. In August, our camera guy, he's pretty seasoned down here. He's born and raised in this area. He's seen this country, these deers, his whole life. And he just reaches over and says, just get the binoculars. Just put the, put the gun down. <laughs> it broke my heart. I mean, I thought that was gonna be the one. But after setting the gun down and looking at the deer, um, you know, we, we had decided, we, well, August, decided that he was too young. And so we left the gun there and just watched him. And it, and it was really neat. It's kind of like catch and release fishing. Um, you know, we got to enjoy that animal and watch him feed through, saw some more bucks come through and, uh, you know, wait for a bigger one. That's like catch and release fishing right there. It's fun just to be able to watch him, even if you're not going to shoot him, you know. It's a cool experience. He's not leaving either. He's just going to hang out. So needless to say, the first day here in Texas was exactly what I was hoping for. So we hunted a few different stands and pretty much every one of them had something unique about them. Um, you know, some of them, we were looking down roads, had feeders out there running. Um, a lot of these areas were just kind of some open brush and every different sit was really unique in its own way and, and all pretty, uh, you know, pretty fun to be able to look through a lot of that different terrain. You know, sometimes we'd see deer cross a road and then you could watch them working through the mesquite brush. And, you know, for somebody like me that just sits on a lot of food plots mostly, um, this was, you know, really, really involved, um, you know, while we were hunting. So 
So I always hear this on hunting shows and I always think it's just something that they fabricate, but it's the last morning of the hunt. How many times have you heard that? Well, today literally is the last day of the hunt. And, you know, we made a decision last night to hunt this stand and by we, I was just listening to Jamie. And he said he had seen a lot of does in this stand called Oatfield. And um, he said, look, if, if you find the does, you're gonna find the bucks. So we crawl in this Oatfield stand and almost immediately this morning, we got this nice rack buck come in and I'm just super excited. I'm thinking he's a shooter. Um, although he has a little part broken, is a little bigger body deer, an obviously more mature deer. And August gives me the, I think he's there. I think he's old enough to shoot. And when he said that, I mean, after this roller coaster I've been on, I mean, I, it was hard for me to keep it together. Well, that's the biggest buck of my life. <laughs> I hear this all the time on hunting shows. Last day of the hunt. You always hear last day of the hunt. This really is the last day of the hunt. We've been out here in South Texas all week and we have watched a ton of deer. Every hunt. And I can't believe the sun's just coming up. Oh, thank you, Lord. That was perfect. I can't imagine, you know, I know, I know there's deer out here that are just these giants, you know, but I mean, for me, I, I don't get how out here they call these manage, management bucks, coal bucks. <laughs> to me, that is, that's a giant. That's, that's my biggest buck yet, so hey. We got our things together, unloaded the gun, walked out there, and just as I walked up to that deer, um, you know, I could really tell the the age of the deer. Um, and although a lot of people out here would probably not consider that a trophy, to me it was definitely a trophy, and it is a trophy. And even with an antler broke off, you know, it's just part of the story. That is uh, exactly what we thought he was going to be. <clears throat> it's one of these old deer out here that's just a mainframe eight and. Got to dig it broke off somewhere in there, but you know, the management plan of this ranch out here, this is deer they're trying to get rid of. And <laughs> again, man, I couldn't be happier to be out here and help them with this. Can't wait to get him back to camp and show him off because uh, for a Florida guy like me, this is a trophy. Then a management buck's a trophy. You know, that's another thing out here is these deer, you know, we got to see some interactions between them, uh, bucks pushing each other around. And just when we're in the thick woods back home, we don't see a lot of that. So seeing the deer's activity, uh, you know, just all that plays into this deer's story. 